What I'm talking about tonight is seeing things through the Holy Spirit's eyes. And I'm not even necessarily talking about the gift of discernment, which is a wonderful gift that was given to the body of Christ. I'm talking about the responsibility that every single one of us have to be discerning. I'm talking about being able to find your footing in a world that is filled with chaos. You are inundated every single day with news reports, with sermon clips, with all sorts of information, with all kinds of media formats, social media, television, radio, magazines, billboards. There are messages screaming at you from all different angles and we can hear all sorts of different opinions on all sorts of different topics. I can say something as simple as, today is a blessed day and I'll start a debate on Facebook. Well, Brother David, not for everyone is it blessed. The disobedient are under the wrath of God. <laughs> well, Brother David, you forgot to mention that sometimes there's persecution. Or Brother David, what about those who are struggling right now? How could you say that? You didn't even consider where they were coming from at this point. For everything that you say, there will be a disagreement. For everything that you say, someone will point out something that you didn't say. If I release a teaching on healing, they'll say, well, it's not all about healing. You need to preach salvation. If I preach salvation, they'll say, what good is it to teach them how to be saved if you're not teaching them how to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? If I teach them how to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, some will say, well, Brother David, you forgot to mention that they need to go to a local church. And no matter what you say, there will be someone who contradicts it. No matter what you say, there will be someone who points out something that you missed. No matter what you say, there'll be someone who's offended and bothered. This is why we have to learn to truly discern what God is saying in the midst of chaotic times. The world is filled with messages, philosophies, truths that they believe are actually the truth. Even the church is divided on many issues. People make decisions based on fear, based on emotion, based on intellect alone. And while God did give us a sense of wisdom, and while God did give us emotions, and God did give us an intellect, Ultimately, everything that we decide as believers must be based on the word. So, number one, if you want to sharpen your spiritual discernment and see into the spirit, number one, you have to understand how the word and the spirit work together. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Even at the very beginning, we see the working of the Holy Spirit with the Word. God spoke and the Spirit moved. The Spirit hovered above, the Scripture says, hovered above the face of the deep. Now that word hovered in the Hebrew actually means fluttered or brooded like a bird would brood. It's describing the heavenly dove who is the Holy Spirit. And just as a dove will incubate its eggs so that they hatch, so the Holy Spirit incubates the Word. God the Father speaks, the Holy Spirit hovers, the Word and the Spirit work together. Now it's very important that we understand this dynamic because we actually can be out of balance if we don't understand that God, if we don't understand God will always move through the Word and the Spirit together. Now something we do in church culture is we celebrate the throwing away of the notes. We celebrate when there isn't any word declared. We'll say things like, oh my goodness, the service was so powerful. He came out or she came out and they didn't even preach. They just got right to the power. My friend, I'm going to be honest with you. If someone demonstrates the power without first being grounded in the word, 
You don't have the gospel, you have charismatic witchcraft. If someone doesn't present the word, it's because it's not about the word, it's about them and their gift. Now, this is a general to be religious about it, we would have to break it down by percentage. Well, what percentage of the service needs to be the word and what percentage of the service needs to be prayer? That's religion. You don't want to get too far into that. I'm saying in principle that the word has to be the foundation for the move of the Holy Spirit. The word isn't blocking the Holy Spirit from moving. The Holy Spirit moves on the word. Now, there will be some instances where the Holy Spirit comes in and the notes get thrown away. But we must get out of this mindset. We must be broken free from this idea that the less of the word there is, the more the Holy Spirit moves. The word of God goes forth like a foundation. The word of God is the substance with which the Holy Spirit creates. The word of God is breathed upon by the Holy Spirit. You've seen it time and time again where someone will come to a church service, they'll be prayed for, the power of God will come on them, they'll fall out, shake under the power, they get up off the floor, and then they go live like the devil. Why is that? It's because they weren't people of the word. And because they weren't people of the word, there was nothing for the Holy Spirit to breathe on. So they come and they get emotional, they come and they'll feel the power of God on their physical being. They may experience a true touch of his power, but the Holy Spirit had no word to breathe upon. Think about what happened with Saul before he became Paul the Apostle. One encounter with the Spirit of Jesus and suddenly everything he had learned about the law came to life. How did he suddenly have a revelation of the gospel? How did he suddenly have revelation on biblical prophecy concerning the person of Jesus? It was because he had known the word, he just never knew the spirit. He had received the word, he filled himself with it, became puffed up in his own knowledge, prideful because of his intellect, but it wasn't until the spirit breathed on the word that was in him that transformation came and his name was changed from Saul to Paul. Transformation comes. Truth comes. A biblical foundation comes when we understand the Word and the Spirit working together. False doctrines are heavily based on the Word. Oh man, I know some people who can run circles around you with the Bible. But they're teaching ungodly things. Think about these things in history that we hear about, about these cult leaders who drive people to mass suicides, who twist the word for their own sexual pleasure, who draw people in to be a part of cults and heresy and doctrines of devils. How did they do it? They knew the word. In fact, some cult leaders know the word better than some pastors. That's how they're able to be so persuasive because they align themselves with the authority of the word, twisting the word, and those who are ignorant of the word can't even see what's happening. So false doctrines are heavily based on the word. Otherwise, you wouldn't believe them. That's what they do with rat poison. A lot of food, a little bit of poison. A lot of truth, with a little bit of deception. That's why we have to stay firm on the word because the moment we step off of that, we step into error. So false doctrines are heavily based on the word, but they are twisted because they lack the spirit. In the same way, false signs are of a false spirit, but they lack the basis of the word. So the word and the spirit are needed in a move of the Holy Spirit. The Word and the Spirit are crucial. So let's be rid of this notion. 
oh, throw the notes out and just let the Holy Spirit move. It's by the word that the Holy Spirit moves. It's by the word that the foundation is laid, the stage is set for the entry of the glory of God. When Jesus is magnified, the power of the Holy Spirit is intensified. When Jesus is magnified, the power of the Holy Spirit is intensified. Jesus is the Word. When you declare the Word, you are declaring the substance of Christ. John 6 tells us that that Word is more than just spoken Word. That Word is Spirit and truth. So we must be firmly established in both the Word and the Spirit. That's number one. You want to sharpen your spiritual discernment. Number one, you have to understand the dynamics between the Word and the Spirit, and you need both. Biblical balance and true power. Number two, you must know and submit to the authority of God's Word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17 say, All Scripture, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. So here we see that the Word is the authority, the Word is the finality, the Word is the, fo the foundation. There is no higher authority than the Word of God. Now, we say that. It's almost a church cliche. We believe the Word, we believe the Word, we believe the Word. How can you believe the Word if you don't know the Word? I believe the word, I believe the word. When was the last time the word of God corrected something you believe? Really ask yourself that. When was the last time the word of God corrected something that I believed? Because if the word of God always agrees with you, it's probably because you're forcing your beliefs into the word rather than using the Word to form your beliefs. The Word of God is final authority, highest authority. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. This generation, sadly, and this is not something I'm saying from a place of anger or from a place of arrogance, my heart is broken for the fact that at least in America, this generation suffers from word deficiency. We just don't know the word. We just aren't firmly established in the word. The Instagram reel of the day has replaced devotion to study of God's word. Tweetable quotes have replaced time in God's word. Netflix series and YouTube binging have replaced time in God's Word. Psalm 119.89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The Word creates boundaries. And without boundaries, it's impossible to build. If you were to build a structure and you laid a foundation... And that foundation didn't have a shape that was definite, a surface that was even. Then as you begin to build, you would find that the structure would fall. You see, we think that freedom is throwing off all restraints and rules. But true freedom is found within the boundaries of Scripture. We have to stop adding to the Word and creating our own ideas. Especially when it comes to spiritual matters. Especially when it comes to the spiritual realm. We add so much to the Word and we do our best to cram it in there. Why? Because that's what I was taught or that's what I experienced or that's what I believed it was or that's what I want it to be 
or that's what makes me feel special. When in fact, we ought to humble ourselves before the word of God and say, if there's anything in that word that contradicts anything in me, then that which is in me will bow to the authority of God's word. The Bible is not a fortune cookie. It's not up for however you want it to be that day. Well, we say things like, well, that portion of scripture, yeah, I get that it means that to you, but you know, to me, this is what it means. Do you realize that when the Holy Spirit inspired the scripture, he inspired the writers with actual intention, with an actual message, with actual truth he wanted to communicate? And what do we do? We take the stories of Scripture and just kind of make up anything we want from it. I'll give you an example. In the book of Acts, we read of a man who fell asleep during a sermon. He fell out of a window, died on the road, and then he was raised from the dead. You know how many sermons I've heard on that text? Do you know what it's about? It's about a church account, a historical narrative that was about God's power over resurrection or of, over death through resurrection. You know what we make it about? I heard it preached so many different ways. Well, you know, the guy fell out the window because he had one foot in the world and one foot in the church. <laughs> so this, this portion is talking about lukewarmness. That's what it means to me. Or I've heard it said, well, you know, that represents your dreams and it may have fallen a long distance and you may feel like God it's impossible for me to accomplish these dreams and God's going to come and resurrect your hopes and dreams. I'm thinking that's not even what it says. They say, well, that's what I got out of it. People go, oh man, I never saw that before. I'm saying that's because it was never there. <laughs> Why do we do this? Well, spiritual laziness is one of them because we don't want to study to get actual truth. We just kind of, eh, let's slap a truth on that. That seems like a good allegory. The other is because we do have our own preferences that we would rather believe. We do have certain lenses through which we see the world. People use the word like a thermostat when they should use it as a thermometer. See, a thermostat changes the temperature. A thermometer measures it. We try to get the word and use it to adjust to our comfort. When the word is actually a thermometer that tells you what temperature you are. We try to use it to write when we should use it to learn. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 27, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Here Jesus is talking about building your life on the foundation of his word. So many times we build on other things. We build on church traditions. We build on what our family taught us. We build on our preferences and the way that we see the world. Society has already lost its reverence for the word. And the church is losing it too. There's a movement happening now called the deconstruction movement. My heart is broken for these individuals who have found themselves trapped in the snares of their own pride and rebellion. My heart is broken for them. Because the idea is that, well, maybe we need to rethink what we believe about the Word. Now, some will say that's not the case, but if you dig into this for any length of time, you will find that that's ultimately what it is. It's Christians basically saying, well, maybe the word of God isn't the final authority. And they try to take the word 
and make it more palatable for the worldly culture that rages against the truth. That's happening. In our church, in this world, that's happening. And I'm talking about the church at large. People are falling away from the faith. People are denying the truth of God's word. Why? Because the further that culture gets from truth, the more offended it is by truth. It's not that we're now discovering that everything the Bible teaches was wrong and we're just realizing that now. Oh my goodness, how could we have been so cavemen-like? How could we have been such Neanderthals to believe these truths? What's actually happening is that society is slipping further and further into darkness. And the further and further they go in darkness, the more irritated they become by light. So, so it's not that we need to readjust the word. We need to reaffirm the word and stand by it. It's time to stand by the word. And when you stand for the word, there will be resistance, believe me. Always resistance to the truth. The most truthful messages I preach are the most controversial. Now, I'm not trying to be controversial. We shouldn't get joy out of upsetting people. We're not being antagonistic for the fun of it. That's not at all the spirit of Jesus. But we declare the truth despite offending people. We declare the truth despite rocking the boat. Stirring the waters. Atheists don't like what I have to say. People in the world don't like what I have to say. Religious Christians don't like what I have to say. Because it's based on the word. And you will stir the waters. But preach that truth anyway. Know the authority and bow to the authority of God's word. Embrace that. That's what you have to do if you want to be truly discerning. Because... Because the moment you step off the authority of God's word, the moment you step away from that, now you've left a firm foundation and you're left trying to feel around in the darkness by your own understanding. What seems right to you. I can't tell you how many times I've taught something and believers go, this doesn't sit right with my spirit. I say, really, it doesn't sit right with your spirit or it wasn't what you were taught. Or it doesn't sit right with your preferences. We all have to bow before the word. We all have to humble ourselves to this authority. Number three, if you want to sharpen your spiritual discernment, let me just recap real quick. Number one, you have to understand the dynamic between the word and the spirit. So understand the word and spirit. Number two, you have to know and submit to the authority of God's word. And number three, you have to understand how the Holy Spirit speaks. Now, this is going to be challenging to religious paradigms, and I'll tell you why. Because there's a fine line to walk. You must see through the lens of Scripture and then walk by the leading of the Spirit. See through the lens of Scripture and then walk by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you how many times I asked, is this the Holy Spirit or is this just me? And that's a difficult thing to discern. You know what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12? For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Watch this now. Cutting between soul and spirit. Between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and intense. So how can you tell between your emotions, which is soul, your mind, which is soul, your intellect, which is soul, your preferences, which are of the soul? How can you tell between the soul and the spirit? Well, the word tells us. The scripture says that the word divides clearly between soul and spirit. 
Now, I used to walk around in religious torment. When I first got saved, there was a flow. My spirituality, many of you know my testimony. There are so many ups and downs to my testimony. It's, it's like all of these spiritual struggles are what became teachings. But you know, there was a season in my life where everything I did was out of legalism. It got so bad that I would open my closet and I would go to pick a shirt and then just for a split second, I would wonder, maybe I should wear that one. And I would stand there filled with guilt, frustration, torment, saying, Holy Spirit, I don't want to miss you. I don't want to miss you. I don't want to miss you. I would be with my friends and I would feel, I need to go read my Bible right now. I have to go read my Bible right now. I can't be sitting here with people. <laughs> Even in church, I can't, I can't be sitting here listening to a man of God preach. Powerful man of God told me the Holy Spirit will not interrupt himself. But I would, I would go and I'd, I'd have to read and then, and then I wouldn't feel free from that guilt until I read at least 40 chapters. Because, oh, I'm walking in the Spirit. No, I wasn't. Religion. That becomes tormenting. That becomes affliction. That becomes bondage, really. That becomes a bondage in your life, constantly second-guessing every little move you make. The good news is that the Holy Spirit can work through these minor issues that we may think we have. So I used to torment myself, thinking I was hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I wasn't. I can't tell you how many times I've sat across from men and women of God who felt God was calling them to do something, only later to find He was not. Or people who get a different calling from God every other week. This week, God called me to be evangelist. The next week, well, I'm going to do food distribution. The next week, I'm going to start an orphanage. And the next week, now I'm a prophet. God does not change his mind so easily. God is not going in heaven, okay, this week you're an evangelist, and this week you're a prophet. Next week, we'll see. Maybe we'll put you on the worship team. But people become tormented by these things. Restless even. You know why you're restless? You know why you're tormented? Because you're relying on your ability to hear the Holy Spirit rather than the Holy Spirit's ability to speak to you. You're trying to do it in your own strength. And it's religion. So understanding how the Holy Spirit speaks is the crucial key to true discernment. Otherwise, you're going to go with what you want. You're going to go with your preferences. You're going to go with what you've always been taught. And you're going to say that's the leading of the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to double down on that. And then you're going to be stuck in the bondage of deception because it's easier to convince someone that to change their mind the first or the second, the first time than the second time. It's very hard for people to admit that they were wrong. It's very hard for people to admit that they've been fooled. It's easier to fool someone than it is to convince them that they've been fooled. That's a fact. It is easier to convince someone or to fool someone than it is to convince them that they've been fooled. So how does the Holy Spirit speak? Well, it comes back to the word. Number one, and this is a sub point now. I did number one, understand the word. Number two, know the authority of God's word and submit to it. Now I'm on the third main point, but this third main point has four keys to it. So how does the Holy Spirit speak? Number one is the Word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, we just read it. But here we see that it corrects us when we are wrong, teaches us to do what is right. So it guides us in the way and also tells us what is not the way. That's twofold. 
You want a word from God? Open your Bible. You want sharper discernment? Open your Bible. You want to experience the glory? Open your Bible. The word is the key. If you're serious about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, you'll be serious about reading the Bible. Now, the Bible, the word, is the most clear way the Holy Spirit will speak. It is the more sure word of prophecy. The word of God is the most accurate, most reliable way to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You start there. The problem is that people want to start with other things. They want to hear God through dreams before they hear Him in the Word. They want to hear God through prophecy before they hear Him in the Word. They want to hear God whisper to their heart before they hear Him in the Word. The problem is, if you start with your heart, you will be in error. It's why you have to start with the Word. So you begin in the Word. That is the primary way the Holy Spirit speaks. The second way the Holy Spirit speaks is through wisdom. This inner guiding, this inner pool that comes. The Word strengthens you in wisdom, and wisdom helps you to navigate day-to-day -day operations of your life, in your marriage, with your children, on the job, in your business, in your school. If you lack the Word, you will lack wisdom. If your life is rooted on the word, wisdom will follow. I don't wake up every morning and have the Holy Spirit speak specifically everything I'm going to do that day. When I go into a board meeting with ministry board members, when I'm meeting with the television team, when I'm meeting with the worship team, when I'm meeting with the finance, whoever I'm meeting with, it doesn't matter. It's the wisdom of the Spirit. I don't stop the board meeting and say, let's sit here for an hour till the Holy Spirit whispers directly to my heart about every decision. You know, nothing would ever get done. Nothing would ever get done if you were constantly waiting for that very specific, clear instruction from the Holy Spirit on everything. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But you must understand that first the Holy Spirit speaks to the Word, and then He guides your life through wisdom. You will have this inner knowing. It won't be that clear sentence from the Holy Spirit. He's not going to speak actual words to you. There will just be this knowing, this guiding that comes from wisdom, James 1.5 says. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. After the word, wisdom is the most reliable means by which God speaks. Think of Solomon. Think of how the scripture says that wisdom crieth. It's not so much a sentence spoken as it is a sense felt. We wait for those specific sentences whispered to our heart. And because of that, we get stuck or we get caught up in legalism. What jacket is the Holy Spirit going to tell me to wear? What car should I buy, Holy Spirit? Which apartment should I live in, Holy Spirit? That can become tormenting because if you miss it and you think that missing those details completely derails the call of God, well, guess what? You're eventually going to de derail the entire call of God if that's how you see it. Because who among us is perfect enough to get it every single time like that? And if we do get it every single time, it's because we took really, really, really long to hear it. Nothing would ever get done. No ministry would ever grow. You would never advance in your walk with God. You would be stuck waiting for every single move. Know the word. Please hear me if I say it once. I'll say it a thousand more times. The word, the word, the word. <laughs> After the word comes wisdom. Wisdom is not as reliable as the word. But it's still more reliable than number three, the whisper. So first he speaks through the word. 
Then he'll speak through wisdom. And number three, he'll speak through the whisper. Now, this one is difficult to navigate because this is the means that the Holy Spirit speaks that is interfered with by your emotions and your own thoughts. Your emotions will interfere with the whisper. How you're feeling that day will interfere with the whisper. The whisper now is that specific instruction. And I've received those specific instructions. When Jess and I first got married, we had a discussion about a particular issue. It was nothing major. You know, when you get married, you start to learn each other's flow in life. And we were just starting to learn about her schedule, my schedule, her routine, my routine, and making those one. So we had this discussion, and I didn't think anything of it. I, I left the conversation. You know, sometimes we're a little clueless, we husbands. I left the conversation thinking, okay, it's fixed now. We're good. We, we, we fixed the issue. <laughs> Boy, did I lack wisdom. I thought, okay, I solved it. You know, I, I did it like one, two, three, intellectually. Okay, if this, then that. Okay, we solved it. We're done. And, you know, I went on with my day. I'm praying, but I'm just feeling this, like, disruption. You know, husbands are the ones that Scripture describes as having their prayers interrupted if there's an issue with the wife. God doesn't put that on the wife, though. It's the husbands whose prayers are interrupted. That's what the Bible says. And so I'm trying to pray, and I just can't find... I'm like, what is going on, Lord? Like, And then the Holy Spirit, very specifically, not the Word, because... Mine and Jess's discussion is not in the Bible. Not wisdom, because it's not something you would necessarily know right off the bat. But a specific whisper to my heart. The Holy Spirit said to me, Do you remember that conversation you had with your wife yesterday? I said, yes. Holy Spirit said, you hurt her feelings. And I'm trying to think, How? You know how we are. Scratching my head, I'm going through it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even place it. And the Holy Spirit just said, it, it, it wasn't anything specific that you said. It was, it was the way it was committed. It was very just not personal, not just very one technical. Like I'm very robotic with those things. And so I went to Jessica. I said, Jess, um, about the conversation we had yesterday, were, were your feelings hurt? And she said, yes, I, 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 was, I was a little bothered with that. And I, so I apologize. I said, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to come across that way. I, I, I'll work on that. My, she, she told me when we got married, she says, you're like a robot and I'm teaching you to love. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and so I apologize. And she says, you know, it's funny. I didn't want to nag you about that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to throw it in your face. She said, so I just went and talked to God about it. She said, I told him, he told you, and now you're apologizing to me. That is the whisper. That's the whisper. So there are those who say, if the Bible says it, we don't need it spoken to our hearts. And if the Bible doesn't say it, then it shouldn't be spoken to our hearts. And I understand that logic. The problem is it doesn't take into account the specific instructions that we need from the Holy Spirit. Day-to-day living. And I'm not talking about what color jacket you choose to wear that day. I'm talking about very specific instructions from the Holy Spirit that matter and that He's actually speaking to you. That comes through the whisper. So the word is your foundation. Wisdom is the secondary way you hear and discern the Holy Spirit. And third is the whisper. That's the specific instruction to your life. Now, if you try to reverse that and you try to live by the whisper, you're going to end up in legalism and confusion and mental anguish, I promise you. This is why you have to primarily be guided by the Word, fundamentally be guided by the Word, and superficially guided by the whisper. Number four, the Holy Spirit speaks through wonders. Prophets, visions, dreams, miracles, signs. Don't base your life 
on a prophetic word someone gave you. I believe in prophecy. We have wonderful prophets of God tonight. They will even tell you. Do not base your whole life on a prophecy. I can't tell you how many Christians I've counseled who lived in torment for years because they couldn't understand a word a prophet gave to them. And they felt guilt, shame, frustration, confusion, because they were so obsessed with that word going, what am I missing? Oh my goodness, God is passing me by. Am I going to miss the call? And I tell them, maybe they were just wrong. Maybe they just missed it. I mean, they're a false prophet. I can do a separate study on that. A false prophet is not a wrong prophet. I can show you scripture on that. But you know, we honor the gift, but we don't base our lives on it. We base our lives on the word. Now, as I said, we believe in the prophetic. We believe in prophecy. We have brought some highly anointed prophetic people here tonight, and they will tell you exactly what I'm telling you. And we believe the Holy Spirit will speak. It's going to be a wonderful time. You're going to be left going, how did they know that? But first, the word. And once you know how the Holy Spirit speaks, then you can discern, and this is my final point, between the spirit, the satanic, and the secular. Any idea or thought or occurrence can be categorized under the spirit, the satanic, or the secular. Now, not everything that is bad is satanic. Sometimes those bad things can be categorized as secular. I promise you, when people leave churches, most of them are not leaving to go do animal sacrifices. <laughs> We're not losing a majority of our people to devil worship. We lose them to baseball games. We lose them to fishing. We lose them to Netflix. Secular distractions. Now, not everything that is secular is detrimental. This microphone is secular. This stage is secular. These lights are secular. They are not evil unto themselves. So the secular is difficult to navigate. Which brings questions like, should Christians listen to secular music and so forth? And that's a whole different sermon. My point is just that the secular sometimes is more difficult. There's more debate. There's more what people would call gray areas. Though I don't necessarily believe in gray areas in every instance. This is where people will base their so-called discernment off of their minds and emotions. Spirit is easy to discern. Spirit aligns with the word. Satanic will contradict the word. Secular, ah, it's this nuanced, kind of does, kind of doesn't sometimes. That's why it's so difficult. Now, this is where problems are created. And this is where I really want to challenge you, people of God. It's when we start to get into our own minds and emotions and calling it the Holy Spirit that we get into trouble. As I mentioned earlier tonight, I love, one of my favorite things to do is to champion other ministries. And you've seen it on my social media. You've seen it on our broadcast. I'm constantly promoting other ministers and ministries. I recommend other ministers to you because that's what I believe we should be doing in the kingdom. It's about unity is so important to this ministry. Unity is so key. So I was working really hard for, I think it was like a year and a half almost, on getting one of my good friends onto a very popular television program, a Christian television program. Because I knew if we could get this guy on this TV program, it would just... It would, the, the, their ministry would skyrocket and people would love it. I, I said it for years. That TV audience with this ministry, oh, it's match made in heaven. The audience would love them and their ministry would just explode. So I worked 
a while, constantly talking to the producers. You gotta get this guy on. You gotta get this guy on. You got. I do this with a lot of my friends. I get. I get a little annoying. I. I feel like sometimes I'm. 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 I'm the evangelist agent. I get people into these different things. So I'm just pushing. You gotta get this guy on. You gotta get this guy on. Please, please, please. You're gonna. Your audience is gonna love him. So finally, one day it happens. We make the connection. I had lunch with one of the heads of the program, and I said, you got to get this. He said, okay, give me the name. We'll write it down. They wrote it down. They looked into it. And he got on the program. I was excited. So I'm watching the live stream premiere of this show on, on Facebook. Facebook is filled with Facebook theologians and keyboard warriors and <laughs> computer prophets. And anyway, so, so I'm there watching all these comments most of them are great. They're going, oh, man, this guy is anointed. I'm going, yep, yeah, he is. Oh, man, this guy's speaking truth. Yep, that's what he does. He's very bold. So I'm just enjoying it. <sighs> and wouldn't you have it? Someone commented, well, I don't really know. Something about this just doesn't sit right in my spirit. <laughs> and then somebody else chimed in. You know what? I can picture them like this. I was thinking the same thing. That's what they said. I was thinking the same thing. And like three or four people jumped on that. Me too. And you know what they said to each other? This confirms that you were right. I was so mad. I felt like that. Now I felt like Elijah. My like, Lord, can I call it down? He said, just leave them. Leave them. Thankfully, they weren't too much of a distraction, but it happens. We had a lady here one time in this service. While I was taking the offering, ran up from the back, literally started trying to pull people out of the service. Because she says, um, he just wants your money. He just wants your money. She's pulling them, pulling them, pulling them. So Patrick Jankowski, who we love, came and grabbed her and <laughs> threw her out. This is after like five warnings. Didn't matter. Commented on Facebook. Don't go there. They kick out old ladies. And then someone else, this lady whose kid was literally running back and forth screaming, who my staff had asked to go into the hallway. See, the kid is screaming. And they say, can you just go in the hallway till your kid comes down, then you can come right back in. That's what the, the policy is here. She comments on that. I know because they kicked me out. They don't allow children in their services. <laughs> and then a third person commented, oh man, I just started following this ministry and I was trying to figure out if it was real. Thanks guys, now I know. And these are supposedly acts of discernment. You know, you laugh because it's our ministry and you know our ministry. But my question is, who are you doing that to? How many wonderful servants of God and people of God and churches are we just believing stories about? You know, there's a lot of preachers you'll hear who are my friends that don't see eye to eye with, in every doctrine with me. And I've had people write to me thinking that I'm going to celebrate it. They said, I just heard your teaching on this, and I heard their teaching on that, and now I'm unfollowing them. I say, don't do that. Why would you do that? Because on one side issue, they disagreed. We're so dismissive with each other, and then we call it discernment when it's actually the flesh, suspicion, cynicism, and skepticism. And we blame the Holy Spirit for our undisciplined flesh. When people say this doesn't sit right with my spirit, what they actually mean is this isn't what I was taught. This isn't what I believe. I find it amazing that if someone gets up and boldly declares what you believe to be the truth, you say, my goodness, they're bold. But if someone else gets up and boldly believes what you don't believe to be the truth, you say, my goodness, they're arrogant. We are to judge people of God, but we need to judge with righteous judgment, with the word, by the spirit. We take our own personal discomfort 
and we try to blame the Holy Spirit for it. Our own preferences. People of God, if you want to be truly discerning, you're going to have to set aside your preferences. Exchange the lens of how you were raised. Exchange the lens of your political ideology. Exchange the lens of your preferences. And put on the lens of the word. See it through the word of God. See it through his word. The gift of discernment is not the gift of criticism. The gift of discernment is not the gift of complaint. With all that's going on in the world, with all the chaos we're facing today, we need to be grounded on the Word, the Word. When you're, when you're grounded on the Word, it keeps you from wandering into bizarre doctrines. When you're grounded on the Word, it keeps you in line with heaven's authority. When you're grounded on the Word, it keeps you in unity. It saves your sanity. Father, open our spiritual eyes tonight. You want that, just lift your hands and ask him. Ask him to open your spiritual eyes. You watching online, ask him to open your spiritual eyes. Ask him, just write it in the comment section, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching a replay. Write those three words, open my eyes eyes. Let that be your public response to this. Oh, Father, open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. We honor you. Oh, Father, help us humble ourselves before your word. Before your word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Keep us from deception, Lord. Protect us and keep us from deception. Focused on the person of Jesus. Would you all please stand with me in this room tonight? Everyone standing, everywhere, please. Everyone standing. Hands lifted, please. Eyes closed. act of surrender. Lay down your pride, preferences, all of those things. Put them at the feet of Jesus. And his lifted eyes closed now.
So, Father, we ask, give us discernment, Lord. Say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes to see as you see, to think as you think, to declare as you declare. Say it out loud. Say, Holy Spirit, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Now pray out loud in the Holy Ghost and give Him yourself. As I look across the room, I see tears streaming down people's faces. We're humbling ourselves before him, aren't we? God, forgive us for the times we've been too gullible and forgive us for the times we've been too critical and help us to see everything through the way you see it. Through your word, through your word, through your word, by your spirit. Take a moment. He's just doing a work in your hearts right now. He's doing a work in your hearts right now. Let's give it to Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. watching online, God's doing a work in you too. Whether you're watching live or on the replay, just surrender right now. Just surrender. Give him your all. Let him remove those scales from your eyes. Let him soften your hard heart. Lord, give us true discernment. True discernment. We love you, Jesus.
in just a moment, I'm going to minister to those who need healing. Ishmael, stay with me, please. Please reverently be seated. There's a glory on this house right now. And in just a moment, I'm going to minister to the sick. And then, of course, afterwards, we're also going to release the prophetic voices. Those whom God has gifted. Tonight, I'm asking you to give to this ministry so that the work can continue. I don't want to take too long. The power of the Holy Ghost is going to move mightily within the next few minutes here. But first, I need to say this. Please understand your giving is not tied to your healing. The amount you give does not determine your likelihood of being healed. Whether you're wealthy or whether you're broke, Jesus can heal you tonight. He does not discriminate between rich and poor. But I do need to take an offering to support the work of this ministry. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 4 through 6 say this. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Verse 6 of Ecclesiastes 11, Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. You know, there's always a reason to not give. Our flesh will always find an excuse to not give. Whether we criticize the preacher, whether we excuse ourselves because of some circumstance that we're in, whatever we do, the flesh will often try to deceive us. And in Ecclesiastes, the scripture says that farmers who wait for perfect weather, they never plant. There's always going to be a bill to pay. There's always going to be, there's always going to be something you're saving for. The media is always going to be talking about the next calamity. Calamities will come and the calamities will go, but God's provision is forever. God will keep you. We don't give to get. We give to give. We give because we love the gospel. But the problem is many of us are held back by fear. We know what we want to do and then we picture what's in our bank account. And then we imagine all the different things that are coming up. Well, the children need this and the house needs that. My car needs this. And at my work, they're cutting that. And so forth and so on. We are filled with fear about the future. But God is going to take care of you. Whether you give to this ministry or not, God is going to take care of you because He's your Father and He loves you. We don't give so that God takes care of us. We give because we know He's going to take care of us. And that liberates us to be generous. So those of you watching online, I'm asking for your help too. I'm not saying that there's a magic number that you're going to give tonight that's going to solve all your problems. I'm not saying that everyone here is going to be a millionaire. I'm simply saying the ministry has needs. The ministry is growing strong. And I can't give too much away now. But on Monday, we finalize something that I'm going to be talking to the partners about very soon. Very exciting news. I want the partners to be the first to know. And then we'll make it public. But there's some big things we're stepping into in the middle of everything that's happening, this ministry is growing. And that's because God is taking care of it. There's favor because God is taking care of it. The ministry has no debt. The ministry has a surplus almost every month. And we're using that to grow more and more and more multiplication is what's happening right now. That's because of God's favor and that's because of your generosity. So thank you. But you know, when you give to this ministry, all I can promise, because I can't promise what God will do, He will bless you, yeah. He'll, he'll promote you, yeah. He'll bless your business. and all. I can't tell you how. I can't be ultra specific and say, for an $888 seed in eight days, you're going to have eightfold blessings. I don't know. 
That's all gimmicks. I don't use that. All I can tell you, people of God, is I know you love Jesus. I know you love souls. I know you believe in this ministry. All I can tell you is that whatever you give to this ministry will be handled with care. And we're going to maximize every dollar that you put into the ministry to the highest efficiency, to the greatest excellence that we can possibly do. Every dollar you put in will be stretched for soul winning and for building the church, for building God's people. That's what I can promise. Now, to grow as a ministry. In a service like this, a crowd this size, this many people watching, we need the average gift to be between $25 to $50 right in there. If everybody's able to do somewhere in that range, we're going to meet the need and then some. And especially those of you watching online, because you guys add a lot more than you think you do. We're like in the war to, to win this, this battle. And then those online are like the reinforcements. They just come in and give from all over the world. So be a part of this. And I'm asking you to give if you're able, not in response to pressure, not out of guilt, I don't want anybody leaving this place feeling guilty tonight if you're unable to do that. Don't, don't do that. That's the enemy. That's not God. That's not the Holy Spirit. But I do want, if you are able, if you can, to help us by doing anywhere between 25 to 50, even you watching online. If you can't do that, do something. Now, to those whom God has blessed a little more financially, we have a responsibility to give of our resources. There may be people in here, you can do far more than the 25 to $50. There are people here and watching online who can do the one-time gift of $1,000. There are people here tonight who can do even more than that. We've had people in these meetings give 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 in one, one check. If that's you, if God has blessed you with resources, I'm here to tell you, this is good soil. This is a good investment. It's a good donation because we'll put it to use. So those of you watching online, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate right now. Give a one-time gift. I need as many of you as possible to give between 25 and 50. And those who can, do the 100, the 500, the 1,000, or even more. The same applies to everyone here. Everyone do your absolute best. And that average I gave you is about what we need if we're going to cover the need for an event like this and if we're going to have a surplus to do our work next month as well. I know you give because you love Jesus, so thank you. Ushers, if you would, please come forward. We're going to hand everyone an envelope right now. Don't consider the weather, the economic weather. Don't worry. Worry chokes out generosity. Be free to give. Be free to give. The ushers are going to hand out a stack of envelopes to every section, and then they're going to pass those to you. The ushers are going to hand out a stack of envelopes to every section, then you're going to take one and pass it down. You can also go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate if you wish to not use an envelope. And those of you who are giving through the envelope, I do ask that you fill out your whole name, everything, and your address and your email. And as the old joke goes, please don't write in tongues, though we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Make it nice and neat and clear. Again, we need as many of you as possible to do 25, between 25 and $50, as many of you here and as many of you online. If you can, do a gift of 100, do a gift of 500, do a gift of 1,000. There are a couple people in here who could even do those gifts of 10,000, those business people, those people who've done well financially. You have a responsibility to help the gospel move forward. And I'm asking you to give in proportion to how God has blessed you. Give in proportion to how God has blessed you. Do that today for the ministry. The gospel can go forward. I see many gifts coming in from online around the world. I see Martha and Chris and Wendy and Abigail and Susan and Victor and Nicole. And so many names coming in. It's hard to keep up here. Tina and Mitza and Tiffany and Sherry. God bless you all who are giving. God bless you all. And I see Liani and Andrew and Norma and Evangelina. So many, so many names. God bless you all. Thank you so much for your support. 
Do that today, whether you're watching live or maybe you're watching a rebroadcast. By the time you watch this, this event will probably have been covered, but we are still doing events around the world. Unless Jesus comes, the rapture happens. But, uh, but if you're watching this and we're gone, um, I don't know what to tell you, but turn to Jesus. But, but, but other than that, if we're still here on the earth doing the work, it means the work is still going forward. So please, if you're watching a replay, still give and still give in that range because it'll help to cover other events. Are you guys seeing the growth online of the ministry? Isn't that awesome what the Holy Spirit is doing? We've, we've now moved to conference centers. I don't know if you saw that. In Denver, we had to use a conference center. In Atlanta, Georgia, we had to use a conference center. Here in California, we're looking for somewhere. Don't worry. This won't be long. I mean, there's people sitting on the floor in the foyer on the back walls. And that's how you know it's revival when people are sticking to the walls. Holy Spirit is moving. But the Holy Spirit is growing his ministry. And so as you give tonight, I'm giving you some time to fill out that envelope. But as you give tonight, just know it's going to a good work. And this ministry is growing fast, faster than it has ever grown before. And it's all because of the work of the Holy Spirit being done. Thank you for your generosity. Again, those with envelopes, make sure you fill out the entire envelope, name, address, email, phone number, everything on the envelope so that we can put you in the system so that we can be in touch. Those of you giving online again, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Every gift matters. You may be watching and saying, oh, someone else will do it. Every gift matters. Your little seed, you may see it as a small thing, can become a harvest of souls. And we thank you for your support. Thank you to Crystal and Sharon and Michael and Gia and Amanda and Isaiah and Joanna and Paul and Ingrid and Edwin and Kelsey and Vanish and James. You watching online, thank you. Many people giving at davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Those of you who want to be in ministry, remember that everything we do reflects the gospel. So even when you take offerings, you want to do it with Holy Spirit class. The people of God don't need to be pressured or manipulated. They love Jesus. And they'll give as long as they know it's actually going to the gospel. So I want to thank all of you who are giving. God bless. In fact, how many monthly supporters do we have in this place? Would you just stand if you're a monthly supporter? Can we just hear it for our monthly partners? Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. It means the world. You, you may be seated. I know you guys don't give for that, but I wanted to honor you there. Okay, looks like everyone's kind of settled in with their giving. Let's pray. We're going to pass the buckets, then we're going to worship, and I'm going to pray for those of you who need healing in your body. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, your people aren't giving to get, and I thank you for their hearts for the gospel. I thank you that out of their hard-earned income, they are sacrificing for the sake of your word going forward. May their giving rise as a sweet fragrance to you, Lord, for it is an act of worship. And as we lay our resources at your feet, we pray that you would be pleased with us. Lord, bless the giver. Bless them exceedingly abundantly above all they could ask or imagine. Let them never know a day of lack in the name of Jesus. Meet every need. Fund every kingdom vision. Break the power of debt over their lives. Touch everyone here in person, and watching online. Bless them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. And the church said, amen. As the buckets pass, you can put your envelopes in. Can we all just stand? The healing power of God is going to begin to flow right now. You watching online, get ready. The power that manifests here will touch you right where you are. It's the same power, the same power. If we could also please remove the donation slide from the screens. We need to switch the focus now. Hands lifted, eyes closed. Eyes on Jesus now. Eyes on Jesus now. Everyone just begin praying the Holy Ghost out loud, boldly. 
Father, we thank you for your glory. And I thank you in advance for the power that's about to manifest in this room. I thank you, Father, that like electricity, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to sweep across this room. Through those cameras, touching even those watching online. Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you. Hands lifted now as we sing. We exalt thee. For we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh. your hands and tell them, church. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord. Make it personal tonight. Jesus. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, Lord. One more time with every voice lifted, I exalt thee.
Again, Steve, you are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be. Him tonight, we give you all the glory. We give you all the Make it a declaration. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship You He's so holy, church. He's so holy. Lift your hands and just worship him. Just worship him now. Our eyes fixed on Jesus. A holy one. Glory. Many of you are having an encounter with the Holy Spirit now. Many of you here present, and many of you watching online. 
to surrender to that work he's doing now. Fountains of heaven are running, overflowing. Rivers of living water, rivers of living water flowing. Drink from that river now. Drink from that river now. Let your worship join that chorus of heaven. In your own words now, as the Spirit inspires you, I want you just to begin to make declarations of worship and adoration. Lift your voices now, church. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. He's been waiting to hear from you. He's been waiting to hear from you. This is for you, Jesus. Those words you speak put a smile on his face. He's lended his ear to you. His focus is on you. The scripture says that he loves you with an everlasting love. Would you just love him back right now, church, and begin to make those declarations? Voices lifted now. Begin to declare the goodness of God. Begin to declare who he is to you. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. You're holy. You're righteous. You're glorious. Magnificent one. Something is happening here, church, as we worship the living God. Something is happening here as we worship the living God. And if you don't know what to say, just pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Give Him your worship. Give Him your all. Lord, receive this. Receive this. We love you, Lord. I want you to write it in the comment section, those of you watching online, live or replay. Just write in the comment section those declarations of who he is. here. 
The King of Glory is here. Your healer is here. We're going to pray by faith now. Ask Him to heal you. Ask Him to heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands in faith toward your people. Father, I declare that sickness has lost its power. Sickness has lost its power. Cancer, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Cancer, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We break your power. Thank you, Lord, that you are the healer. Thank you, Lord. Under an open heaven now, church. That's what you sense. That's what you're feeling. It's the presence of Jesus. He's here. <laughs> He's here. Lord, lay your hand on them. Let, them. let them be released from their suffering, I pray. Jesus, we thank you that you've come to destroy the works of the devil. We thank you that you've come to destroy the works of the devil. And we pray that sickness would be destroyed in this house tonight. Receive your healing now. Eyes be healed. Ears be healed. Dental issues be healed. Spines come into alignment right now, I command you. Come into perfect alignment. Tumors go. Growths and goiters, we rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Skin disease, we rebuke you. Heart disease, we rebuke you. We, the church of the living God, pray now that every organ would function properly. That every nerve would come alive. Paralysis be healed. Necks be healed. Shoulders be healed. Arms be healed. Legs be healed. Someone's receiving their healing right now. If you just receive it by faith. Someone is receiving their healing right now. Right now, right now, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. That growth is going, that skin is clearing, that pain is leaving all around your body, all throughout your body. Receive it now, receive it now, receive it now. What I want you to do by faith right this moment, because the power of God is moving, I want you to check for that sickness. If there was pain when you moved a certain weight, right this very second look for that pain if there was a growth anywhere on your body check for that growth if there was an issue with your eyes check your eyes with your ears check your ears every pain every disease every sickness every deformity check it now check your skin I believe skin is clearing check for the growth check for the pain in your knees and in your feet and in your legs and in your arms God is healing all sorts of things. Miracles are happening all over the room, and miracles are happening online right now. If you believe God has healed you, would you just wave at me, please? If you believe God has healed you, wave nice and big. Look at that all around the room, church. Look at that, church. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for this? Listen, if you just waved at me, and you believe that you've been healed, I'm going to ask you to do something that may make you a little bit nervous, but that's okay. Sometimes the Lord asks us to step out in faith, doesn't He? If you've been healed in your body, and you know it, just like those that waved at me, then I want you to come out of your seat right now and come and line up right where they're waving you down over here. Come now. It's okay. You can come now. Let's give them a hand as they come in boldness and faith. Come now. 
from every direction. Look at all these people coming. This is God's power. Large or small miracles. You know, sometimes we don't realize how big of a deal a miracle is to others. When we were in Atlanta, Georgia just recently, how crazy was that? You've got to check out the live stream from the second night of Atlanta. There was a boy who came up who was born colorblind. And his eyes were closed during the worship. And then he opened his eyes to see all sorts of new colors that he had never seen before. It's on our channel. You should check it out. And he testified of the Lord healing him. It was powerful. So when it's the Lord, you never know what kind of miracles we're going to see. And then I know um, Sergio and then Matt, if you could also help us, thank you. By the way, my friend Joshua Kelly is here. Good to see you, my friend. God bless you. You can all take your seats now. How many of you are looking forward to seeing what the Lord has done here? Okay, you online too. If God healed you, testify. Just write it in the comment section. I actually can see what you're doing here. I look down every now and then. And now my battery's about to die. But it's okay, because I'm in contact with you. What a wonderful God we serve. Just take a moment. Jesus, we promise that every miracle will be to your glory. Every miracle we see, we will remember who did it. Thank you for your healing hands. We love you, Lord. Tell them that. Just say, we love you, Jesus. Okay, Sergio, what happened here? Diga, this is Amanda. For the last three months, she's been having pain on her shoulder. She dislocated it while she was coaching. And she said the whole time being here, she felt the presence of God. And there's no more pain. You tested it out during the worship or at another point in the service? Um, always. I always feel, or I always felt the pain. So yeah. And I'm very body aware, so it's a big deal for me. So what happened when the Lord healed you? What was it like? Um, well, I just was focused on His presence the entire time, and it took having the boldness and the faith to say, I have the expectation and I believe that you will heal me. And I think just the expectation itself was a gift enough, so healing from my shoulders. I can sense it now. Isn't His presence awesome? It's beautiful. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Lord, let this sickness never return. Stretch your hands toward her. You know, as the night progresses, that healing anointing just intensifies. And there really is a presence here. And I pray, Lord, you would make it even more intense. We want to be swimming in it, Lord. Touch my sister, Lord. Let her sense your presence and power. Wash over her. Fill her to overflowing. And never let this sickness come back in the name of Jesus. Would you all just stretch your hands forward for a second? And pray, not just for me, pray for everyone on this platform. Pray that God would intensify that tangible touch on the room. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. You watching online too. Pray that God would intensify that. Softly, Steve. Rejoicing, look at me. Go rejoicing in that. Jesus did it for you. To him belongs the glory. What happened here, my friend? David, this is Mark. He's had kidney pain for several years now. And he said, as you begin to pray, his pain went from a six to a zero immediately. A complete release. Completely. What were you suffering with again? It's a, a bad problem in my kidneys. And it just went away. How long have you been dealing with that? Off and on for about two years now. Two years you've been suffering with that pain. How bad was the pain? About a six. A six out of a ten? Uh-huh. And what's this mean to you that Jesus did this for you? That he's so good. He's just, if you believe and you truly seek his face and you trust in him, he'll heal anything. It's the Lord. 
lift your hands, sir. Father, let your power touch this man. I thank you. Oh, I thank you for your healing touch on this man. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. There, there's something God wants to do tonight in all of us. And I do sense that we're standing under an open heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the weight of it just beginning to intensify. What happened here, Matt? David, this woman for years had bad vision in her right eye. She couldn't see the way she sees in her left eye. And she says, before you even prayed, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon her. And now she can see vibrant colors, and it's the same as a left eye. Thank you so much. Everything just looks so much clearer, like bright, like just... And what was that like as you were worshiping the Lord? It felt pretty amazing, I will say. And how long has this been a problem for you, the eye? Um, a few years now. And I have bad night vision. And so I just feel like I can see so much clearer now. You can see much clearer out of that eye. Which one was the good eye? Cover the good eye. Cover the good eye. Yeah. And tell me what's the difference now. Um, I could just see the same as in my left eye. Because my left eye had good vision and my right didn't. So now I could just see. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory for the healing anointing. Whoa. <laughs> Bring her back here. What did you just feel go through you? She said, <laughs> say it again. I got a rush of electricity. Do it again, Lord. I thank you for the healing anointing. Whoa, there it goes. It's, it is like electricity. And this is the way people describe it in the meetings. You know, don't criticize what you don't understand. I can't explain to you why it's like electricity in these meetings. It just is. It just is. And if people will have the faith, they'll receive that touch. Sometimes we overthink things. We analyze things. But it's not in my touch, it's in his. Some watching say, well, is he pushing them? No. Trust me, I will, a, a touch of my finger is not strong enough to throw someone backwards. I promise you. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. What happened here, Sergio? Diga, this is Aida. She actually dislocated her tailbone three years ago and even came with pain. When you said to test out to see if the pain left, she said there was no more pain. Show us. What were you telling me right now? That it's... It feels like my tailbone went back into place. As you were mentioning the different things, I felt that it was working on my body. And did you sense the presence of the Lord as He healed you? What was that like? Amazing. I just feel grateful. Overwhelmed. I know I was supposed to be here because I've been away from Him. <laughs> and I know He called me here today. <laughs> So it's extra special. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. The Bible says he is faithful even when we are not. You know, sometimes we come to the Lord. Let this be a lesson to you. Sometimes we come to him thinking, I've been so far gone. I've been away from him for so long. And just as the father ran toward the prodigal son when he saw him off in the distance, so our heavenly father runs to us. This woman came tonight with not just the weight of her pain physically, but with the weight on her conscience, knowing that she was distant from the Lord. And just like the prodigal son, sometimes we say our apologies and we give our speeches and the Lord doesn't even hear that. He just reached down and healed her. That's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. David, this is Geraldine. She's had a constant cough for almost a month now. She couldn't sing, she couldn't talk without coughing. Tonight, as she began to worship, she has not had one cough and is sang and sang and sang. Taking a breath again. And that would normally cause you to cough? Or were you just coughing out of nowhere? Just coughing when I'm trying to sing. But now I sing. I'm happy. 
I sing <laughs> because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Receive it all. Receive it all. There goes. She, she's like jolting backwards. I love it. What are you feeling on here right now? She's in a different place. Well, you go rejoicing in your miracle. God bless you. Matthew, my friend, what happened? David, this woman does street ministry, and she was praying for people all last weekend to get healed, and they were receiving healing, and the devil attacks her. She's been having bad uh, pain in her wrist from a pinched nerve, and as she was worshiping, she said the fire of the Holy Spirit hit her arm, and now she can move it and do what she couldn't do before. Show us. Praise the Lord. This hand is going to praise the Lord. Yes. How bad was the pain? It was really bad. I could not even move it or anything. I, it literally was the, it was just disabled since Friday night. Yeah. What did you feel come on you as the Lord was healing you? Uh, what did I what? what did you oh yeah, it was just the heat of the, the presence of the Lord was just overwhelming. Yeah. What was that like? Just really intimacy with the Lord. It was just like really personal. I think it's and I realized that as much as we do uh, street ministry, He also wants to meet us personally as we we're serving the Lord, and it was just like. A, different just to realize he also is caring for me and my pain you know lord bless her ministry in the name of jesus Ooh, you guys have been praying i can sense it lord bless her ministry let her walk away today with a fresh touch a fresh impartation there it goes i thank you Ooh, ooh, receive it all whoa receive it all there it goes, there it goes. Patrick, hold her up. I don't want her to fall off the platform now. Jesus, we honor you. There's, there's, I feel like electricity pulsing through my hand right now. Pray in the Holy Spirit. What does that feel like? She's in a different place, guys. I can feel it moving through my hand. Well, you go rejoicing in your miracle, and may God use your ministry mightily. We thank you, Lord. Sergio. Diga, this is Christian. He dislocated his shoulder two years ago. And while we were praying, you said, test it, see if the pain was still there. He went to move his arm around, and before there was pain, there's no longer pain there. I used to stretch it. There'll be at least pain. I don't feel nothing right now. Nothing. How long have you been dealing with that? For like two to three years. I got hurt at work. Years and Lord, use him for your glory in the name of Jesus. Evangelist David, Joshua. David, this is Anna. She's had severe back pain for over seven years now. This is her daughter. She was scheduled to get an epidural and surgery, but tonight she said the pain is completely gone. I had a car accident and I fell. I fell, and right now my legs are burning. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. So you, you, you also fell? Yeah, I also fell. In a, in last weekend? Last weekend. At Santa Monica. You fell at the Santa Monica Pier? Yeah, I fell in the pier and in the car accident before that. And right now my legs are burning. In a good way? In a good way. Okay, good. In a good way. She says her legs are burning. How, how, how long was the fall? How, 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 how high did you fall from? Oh, okay. Antelope Valley and my daughter brought me and it was just a mission to get here my pain yeah. what couldn't you do before it's for me even to walk even to walk come on walk with me and you couldn't do that no I couldn't thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and the church said bring her here and you are to her, you want the same thing? Lord, bless her too in the name of Jesus. I give you the glory. 
Sergio, what happened? Diga, this is Claudide. When she came, she had blurry vision. She said she couldn't even write her name. And she said she could see clear now. She couldn't even write her name. She could see. I don't know what happened. I, I really, I don't know what happened because I was praying, closed my eyes. And when I open, I see all the colors pretty clear. I just, I can't understand, you know. But um, also, what I really, really impressed me, and I saw Jesus Christ in front of me. I saw him in my, I felt that he was walking around. And he stopped in front of me. It's, that's really, I feel like, I don't know how to explain this. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Oh, don't, don't, don't be afraid. I know it's intense. Don't be afraid. Sometimes they grab me and almost take me down with them. That's his power. Say again. I love Jesus so much. And I feel like he comes and he's with me. Feel him right now. What does it feel like? He loves me so much. I mean on your body, what are you feeling also? Say again. I'm shaking. Hard to explain, huh? Explain. She's, she's having such a time with the Lord. Even, even She's even nervous to grab my hands. I feel her pulling away from my hands. <laughs> Don't be afraid. That's one of the, the most common. They're afraid, so they kind of like, what's going on there? What you're feeling moving through you is the power of the Holy Spirit. And now her vision is cleared up. God bless you. You go and enjoy what the Lord has done for you. Isn't this awesome? You know, we've been seeing the Lord healing vision. Uh, and it's been a, an incredible, incredible things that we've been seeing other than that as well. I mean, growths are disappearing. Paralysis is being healed. People are being set free from sicknesses and from bondages. Can we just give the Lord a hand of praise, please? And Patrick, let's move this. I'll take my phone, actually. And the night's not even over yet. How many ready for the prophetic gifts that God has given to the church? Stephen, don't sit down. Patrick took your chair. I wouldn't want to see you. Yeah, I had to warn you. So we'll need four there and then one for me over here. Look at these ushers. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for these ushers? And I need one right here. Well, yeah, I have to sit with them. And now, guys, let me give you a heads up. I will be on my phone, but I'm not dishonoring the prophets. I'm looking to see if anybody's receiving words from the prophets on, online. I can't forget about the online audience. So I'm going to bring them up just um, one at a time here. And Patrick, if we could also get this thing just kind of moved off to the right. Thank you, my friend. Um, first, let me bring up a dear friend of mine uh, who is based in Northern California. You've seen him on Encounter TV multiple times. Can we welcome to the platform Prophet Robert Sanchez, please? You made it, my friend. You made it. Two hours of delay and you're here. Come, come right next to me. And then also, um, would, uh, would, you, would you please also welcome Jose and Angela Vargas, anointed and gifted of God. Just highly anointed, highly anointed prophetic voices. You online, get ready. I'm going to nudge them to prophesy online too. And you two can sit right here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I also want to take a moment here. As I said, I'm introducing to you. I'm going to have Sergio sit there. I'm introducing to you. It's my honor and privilege to introduce this ministry. Many of you may know him, but I have yet to do a public announcement. He's ministered at some of our services. And, you know, timing is everything with the Lord. And this man of God came to me a few years ago. He said, I want you to disciple me. Now, I'm not the one who discipled him as prophetic gift. That was the Holy Spirit. God's the one who does that. I only mention that 
because it gives me a unique perspective in being able to watch his journey. He was so humble about it. He says, he said, if you see anything wrong, you correct it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. I said, okay. And just an honor to know him. He works at our ministry facility. He helps him. He actually is, does all the mailing for the partner pins and books and all that. He works in the warehouse. So I always say, we have next door a warehouse full of books and we have a prophet in the warehouse too. But, but this is an anointed man of God. And I want to welcome and introduce, this is a special moment. This is a special moment because we get to witness the beginnings of something. We get to witness the beginnings of something. I say all that not to say, well, you know, he can thank me for... No, 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 no. I don't say... I say that to say that it's my honor to have a part, even a small part, in being able to see what God is doing in this young man's life. So can we please welcome to the platform Prophet Sergio Sanchez. Come here for a second. Tim, I want his website on the screen. Let me, give me a thumbs up when it's up. Okay, he said thumbs up, it's up. He's, you're fast, Tim. That's... Tim Lay, man. Every ministry needs a Tim. Those of you watching online, those of you here, go to prophet Sergio Sanchez Ministries.com. Sergio Sanchez Ministries.com. Check out this ministry. Support this man of God. Get behind him. Pastors, get him in your churches. I can say without hesitation or reservation that I highly recommend you get him in your churches, at your youth conferences, in your Sunday morning church. He comes with a strong preaching gift, a strong prophetic gift, but I can say this, most importantly, this is a man of integrity, a man who walks in humility, a man who loves Jesus. And you'll enjoy him. He's easygoing. He's not a diva or anything. He won't, he won't demand that you pick out all the green M&Ms and leave only the rest. He's an awesome man of God, highly anointed, and he's going to be joining our prophetic team tonight. Okay. So again, I'm not dishonoring you guys. I'm not like on Instagram or anything, like checking my messages. I am on my phone. Um, uh, Patrick, you said we have how many people outside? So there's several people still wanting to get in. Are you guys okay with squeezing? Okay, bring them all in. Let's just get them situated. If you're in the, the, the overflow room, come in. There's actually lots of seats on the floor up here too. You're probably more likely to get a word on the floor. So just saying, look, like everyone's shifting now to go. Uh, but but, but, but let's, get, let's take a moment to settle them in. If you're in the foyer, come in. You're in the overflow, come in. Um, if you have a child, just hang out toward the back just in case they start speaking in tongues. And then the rest of us will... We'll, 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 of course, appreciate that. You watching online, I'm going to be looking at my phone. But guys, just so you know, if anybody takes a clip and says, look at David, he doesn't respect the prophetic. It's not true. You can say, no, I was there. He was checking the online stream. Um, I can sense faith in the room. Wow. Can you guys sense that? So what we're going to do is we're going to go one by one. Prophet Rob, Prophet Sergio, Prophet Angela, and then Prophet Jose. You're going to give a word to someone. They're going to ask you to stand. They're going to prophesy over you. And then from there, you're going to sit down and they'll get on to the next one. But I do it this way because we can get as many people as possible. You watching online, you here in person, um, these guys can go quite a while. So buckle up. It's going to be a good time. But of course, if you're here on a Sunday night, this is the crowd that will stay for hours and hours and hours. So Holy Spirit, we thank you and we honor you. We pray tonight that you would speak to us through your gifts the prophets. We honor their gifts, Lord. We honor each and every one of them on this platform, and we thank you for their lives and their ministries. We thank you that you've called them. We thank you, Lord, that you've placed them here. We give you the glory, Jesus. We honor you. Amen. And Sergio, just flow with how they want, or not Sergio, uh, Ismail, flow with how they want it. Yeah. You, pardon? Yes, you may. And then, uh, and then Prophet Rob, go for it. All right, perfect. This young lady right before me, 
you stand? Yes, in the back. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. This is your set season of transformation. You went through a season where everything seemed to slowly unwind. But the Lord says, look at it as a domino effect. He says, when dominoes fall, he said, I get ahead, pull things out. The Lord says, the day of things falling in an unfavorable manner has ended. He says, I'm swinging momentum, faith, healing, and most of all, your self-confidence and worth in a new direction. This last season, the enemy came to take away your confidence. He came to take away your joy. Oppression, depression, and sadness tried to make a roost in you. But the Lord says, I am giving you strength. You thought was a dark season was nothing more than a rooting season. Before a tree could sprout, the seed has to sink. God says, know that this year your roots have went deep now i'm about to cause an emergence i hear the spirit of god say by march of this new year something supernatural is going to take place not only will you rise but you will step forward in joy confidence will be your portion you will open your mouth in realms of faith releasing miracles signs and wonders for you have cried out for glory god says today i am visiting you with my power my presence and i'm filling you with a fresh breath of my spirit the lord says get ready the things that you've written in darkness are now going to be shined upon the light the days of mourning are over the days of rejoicing are set before you for surely i've anointed you to break through and step into a brand new day says the spirit of the lord you with the glasses can you stand I hear the Lord saying for you, he said, expansion is coming for your ministry. But I hear the Lord say during the time of waiting, God says, don't be discouraged. But I hear the Lord say there's a door getting ready to open even financially. God says, don't worry about the ones that are watching from the outside. But well, the Lord said, your fruit will speak for itself. I hear the Lord say that you are a carrier of the glory. And I hear the Lord say that you, you hold the Holy Spirit preciously. And the Lord said, greater shall come for the ministry. I I hear the Lord say, Ma Shabbat, I see that it is Shanda Yeshaba. God is saying, the next door that's getting ready to open, God says, guard your heart. For the Lord said, the enemy is going to come and try to bring a deceiving thought. But the Lord said, cast it down and use my word, said God. The young man with the uh, gray sweatshirt on you, I saw you standing and you got up. I heard the Lord said, there's a season about to change. The Lord said, you're going to be a dancer. I see you dancing and coming up with songs. And I see a prophetic dance is about to take place. The Lord says, son, get ready. I'm going to open a door for you to travel, to go from place to place. I see a team of boys and men around you that's going to push you out. I see songs and records and CDs about to come flowing out of your mouth. The Lord said, you're not going to only rap, but you will have songs. The Lord said, I'm about to create the sounds of heaven inside of you. I'm going to cause your voice to echo out throughout the earth and the Lord says son get ready I'm going to cause your family and the multitude to come he said you will be one that draw them in draw them to a place and you will set them free by the power that's inside of you the Lord said this is a season that is going to call a turnaround season for you I just see sound I see dance I see music and the, the Lord said begin to write the song that you hear in your spirit says the Lord of grace hallelujah hallelujah pastor Matt Evangelist Matt, the Lord has gifted you and has placed a very prophetic or very uh, powerful evangelistic street ministry. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say this, I am getting ready to add another dimension to your ministry. I literally see you walking down Western and walking down Division uh, Highway right there uh, in Chicago. And I, and I see you laying hands on sick people and they're going to come up uh, to recover. And, and, and I see God doing this because he's ready to move uh, in that area in Chicago because there's so many people that are hurt. So many people that are, that, that are messed up. So many people that are crying out. And God says, I've trusted you in the little. And God says, yeah, I'm getting ready to make you ruler over much. Get ready. This new dimension as you leave today and as you go home on this week God says get ready be, get, be looking and be listening because I'm getting ready to fill your mouth and I'm getting ready to put heat uh, on your left, on your right hand I'm getting ready to put heat uh, where you're going to walk by and lay hands uh, and people are going to begin to recover in Jesus name says uh, the spirit of the Lord hallelujah I have someone on YouTube a young man by the name of EO Savior E-Y 
E-Y-O, E-O. This is what I heard the sovereign Lord say. You have cried out for a move of God. You've cried out for a prophetic word, but even greater, you've called out for an evangelistic anointing with a healing touch. God says that in which you've cried for, I am sending your way. The Lord says, even as you lift up your hand, you're going to feel an impartation and it's going to become a radical move. Get ready because in your nation, there is going to be a sound of revival. Dead things are about to come to life. God says, I'm going to cause you to ascend to the high place, even as I lifted Ezekiel up and he he saw when Ezekiel came into agreement that word agree means symphoneo God says there is going to be a sound of, of a symphoneo a sound of harmony that's going to come between you and the heavens and as you begin to minister over a people their eyes are going to be open their hearts are going to be changed and salvation will come forth for you are a radical evangelist a carrier of fire what you touch I will impart to what you touch I will transform for I will cause many to be radically saved get ready Io for my hand is mightily upon you to bring a great move to your city your state your nation and your people says the spirit of the lord uh you uh with the with the chain can you stand i hear the lord say that there's been a lot of discouragement and it seems as if every time you try to get into worship it seems like you can only get so far i hear the lord say because the devil is trying to stop your praise because he knows that when you're able to receive a praise break you received all that you have from god and i see in the spirit right now that even the last six months it seems as if you've been trying to get close to god but every time you get close it seems like the devil presses even more i hear the lord say that today it breaks off of you the walls that have been up God says they come down and I hear the Lord saying even with anxiety it breaks today I hear the Lord say that you are a worshiper at heart I hear like David and the reason why the devil attacks your mind so much is because he knows that when your mind is focused on Jesus that the devil can't stop you or he can't trick you I hear the Lord said in this next season that you're getting ready to enter God says praise will be your portion I hear the Lord said when you begin to open up your mouth and begin to worship you'll begin to see the manifestation of the Holy Ghost begin to be revealed to you even deeper than before but God says worship is your weapon just like he said the Lord said send Judah first the Lord said send a praise toward heaven first and you'll begin to see me fight your battle said God the young lady with the shirt on said I got this right here as you was rocking back and forth, I heard the Lord say, I'm breaking the chains and the barriers off of your life. The Lord said the stronghold that tried to keep you down, darkness was all around you. But the Lord said, it is my light that shines bright through you. The Lord said, there has been pain in your body. But he said today, I come. Last night, I had electricity go through my hand and it went through my heart. And I told my husband, I said, babe, something is going to happen. What is going on? I knew what it was. It was something that God was about to do in this service. And then uh, uh, Evangelist Diga said it. And I said to you tonight, there's electricity of the power of God is about to touch you. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's about to invade you the Lord is about to touch your body where healing is about to break forth out over you there's sickness that came upon you and it caused you to be falling and, and, and be in a place of despair and loneliness but the Lord say today I come and I rip off I rip the veil off of you I rip off deception off of you I, I take the blinders off of your eyes and today you will see the very call that God called upon your life he said I break the stronghold and I said a word of recovery to your soul. I set you free by freedom. I set it forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mama, they was right next to I got this shirt. Yes, ma'am. Could you go ahead and stand? I hear this. You, you ma'am. Yeah, you, you're right there. Right where you're at. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say this. Your tears have made an aroma into the heavens for the tears of your family. God says, I am getting ready to pour out a blessing upon you and upon your descendants. I'm getting ready to pour out my very best upon you because you've sacrificed in tears uh, and you've cried out long nights and, and long prayers for your family to be saved. God says, this is the season where I'm getting ready to bring them forward. They're getting ready to have an encounter with me, says God. God says, I am getting ready to bring them from the north, the south, the east, and the west and bring them out of the despair and out of the hurt uh, and out of the frustration. God says, your faithfulness uh, has touched my heart uh, on tonight. God says, get ready for this is the season of recompense. This is 
the season that I am bringing them all back, says the Spirit of Grace. Right, there's a young man right here who has a forgiven shirt. Will you stand? Hallelujah. When I looked at you, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, tell him, tell him he doesn't have to be invited to the party. The party can't start until he arrives. There has been many things that you've been left out of. And the Lord said, so is David. But the Lord says, the anointing could not flow from the horn and a king could not be chosen until David was sent for. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, son, I have chosen you to be a king amongst your family. I've called you to be a ruler amongst your house. I've called you to be set apart, a carrier of glory. And the Lord says, even now, as you step forward, look at me, if you would just start stepping forward, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, come, 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 come. He said, even as you're stepping forward, he said, the anointing is coming to you. He said, the anointing is coming upon your head and it's taking you to a new high place. Even as the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, it comes upon you from this day forward. Rise up and know that you are chosen for a day, an hour, and a time such as this. The Lord says, you will not go back into a low place, for I will call you out of the wilderness into a place of rule. The day of depression, the day of sadness, the day of being skipped over is now come to an end. This is your day of appointment. Rejoice, says the Lord. Owner prophesy to Mary Tan. Can you stand, Mary Tan? Yes. I hear the Lord saying that He's seen your faithfulness. And I'm, I'm, I'm also seeing the Lord favoring you even in your finances because you're a giver. And I hear the Lord saying, You hear the Lord speak to you. I hear the Lord said, He said, Don't doubt when you hear me. I hear the Lord saying, Ma Shabbat da Sidr de Shanda Yashaba, that my hand is upon you. And I hear the Lord also saying right now, He said, I'm strengthening you like a youth. God says you will run and not be tired. I hear the Lord saying this even now. That oftentimes the devil tries to bring confusion, but the Lord said he's removing it now. And I hear the Lord saying that he's even changing the atmosphere in your household. I hear the Lord saying that even in your household, when you begin to walk in even today, God says you're going to see a shifting. I hear the Lord say that you're going to begin to even hear him clear in the secret place. I literally see you praying to the Lord and the Lord called my Shanda Yeshaba. I hear the Lord saying that you will be a mother to the motherless. But the Lord said you will shout to them and love on them and show you my glory. My Shanda Yeshaba. But the Lord said you've been faithful with the small. That's why I can trust you with greater. God says, my Shanda Yeshaba. Don't allow the lies of the enemy to creep in and try to bring confusion. I'm seeing other people trying to come in and trying to place dots of doubt inside of you. God says, God says, listen to my word. For my word that I speak to you, God says, you already know. Hallelujah. There, there's a lady on here by the name of Rebecca. I heard the Lord say, your brook was dried up. But he said, I send the overflow. He said, I caused it to be refilled this very moment. He said, I caused it overflow. There was a moment in your life, I, I see it was like two weeks, two weeks ago, your finances, things was taken away. But the Lord said, I come to hand it back to you. He said, it wasn't that I was taking it away. I was causing your faith to be molded and built to trust me. The Lord said, daughter, step out of the place where you at and walk into the place where I call you. He said, the fountains of river is flowing right now. He said, pick up where you at and begin to move. I see a move for you. I see the Lord open a door for a house for you and your family. The Lord say, daughter, I didn't dry the book up. I'm the Lord of the overflow. And he said, tonight I'm gonna cause an overflow to come your way. I'm gonna cause things to flow to you. I see, I see a, a young lady that has been helping you with work. And the lady is, 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 is I don't know if she's uh, giving you things or, or, or bringing things to you, but I see this young lady being a hand to you. She is the hand of the Lord to bless you financially, to bring you out of this place where it's dry and where you stuck. But the Lord say tonight, daughter, you are about to move to another place. You're about to move to a promise. You're about to move to the overflow. And it was for a girl named Rebecca. That is watching right now. Hallelujah. That was Rebecca on YouTube, right? Yes, on so, YouTube. Uh, I, I sense the leading of the Holy Spirit. One of you has a word for a woman by the name of Emily Laramore. 
Emily Laramore. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about Emily Laramore. That might be you. Emily, this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, this is your appointed time of victory. Last season, Emily was filled with agony and defeat. But the Lord says, today I'm returning the thrill of victory. This is your get up, rise up, stand up, be strong moment. The enemy has tried to pin you against the wall. But the Lord says, I've made you a centerpiece, not wallpaper. He said, this is your moment to surge and come forward. The Lord says, I'm anointing you with the power to get up. The Lord says, I put the power of a cause on the inside of you. The word cause in Hebrew is the word debar, which means I have spoken a word that is being written in your heart that's going to give you the power to rise up through adversity and conquer. The Lord says, this is your pursuit, overtake without fail recover all season the lord says rise up be strong take your land for victory has been granted to you this very day says the spirit of the lord this young lady in the black and white in the second row yes ma'am could you stand your yesteryears or your yester season does not define who you are what you went through in the past is that in the past and you need to leave it in the past I hear the spirit of the Lord say you're getting ready to walk into a new season just as the fall has coming in and the trees are turning and the leaves are falling down God says I am making a new thing inside of you joy shall be your portion in this season I see you late at night crying wondering head in the pillow wondering God why is this happening to me the frustration the guilt and this shame is getting ready to be stripped off of you this is your new season and this is the season where joy is going to come back and fill your heart once again I hear God say this get ready get ready get ready because this season that is coming up on you right now is going to be the best season that you've experienced uh, in the last three to four years uh, have been nothing but turmoil, have been nothing but mess, have been nothing but junk. Uh, and God says, I have turned it around on your behalf. Your favor I mean, or his favors get ready to come upon you in this season. Watch uh, by the end of February how God is going to turn your situation around where you're going to be walking in the favor, the anointing, the promises, and joy is getting ready to come back uh, into you, says the spirit of grace young lady with the, like a little hat and right in the middle right there will you stand yes the tan I heard the spirit of the Lord say you came in here desperate for healing you came in here desperate for breakthrough and I am the Lord that will make a way this last season there was a season of great isolation because of hurt and disappointment what you did is you built up a wall the Lord says and you built the wall so high that nobody could reach you and now you're disappointed because you want love but no one could reach you so the Lord says I'm going to do something for you now I'm going to take the bricks down and begin to build a bridge that you might cross through for the wall that you built to protect yourself will now become a bridge that will let you enter back into relationship the Lord says I'm feeling you from depression I'm removing anxiety and I'm uprooting fear and I'm gonna cause the day of tears to dry up and I'm gonna cause the fountains of blessing to flow for every tear that you have poured out wondering if I'm for you or with you hear me today not only am I for you and with you but I'm pouring out showers of blessing the Lord says get ready because I'm about to cause blessing to come in the month of November there is a day of breakthrough that's coming in the season of November he says it's the time of harvest rejoice you will see your family mightily touched you will see those in whom you love change healed delivered and transformed but i started with you today is your day of victory says the spirit of the lord i said your word into her spirit young man uh you with the phone yes stand up i hear the lord saying that you're a worshiper and i hear the lord saying Ma shaba da sidra de shanda ya shaba. i hear the lord saying that God is going to begin to show you his glory through worship. And I hear the Lord saying that when you were formed, even as a child, God already named you to be a worshiper. I hear the Lord saying that oftentimes there's going to, there's some obstacles that try to come. But the Lord said it's worship. God says begin to worship. Lift your hands. Father, I just pray, God, that you would baptize him in the Holy Ghost and with fire right now. Lord, I just prophesy over him now. God, that even as he begins to worship, God, that he would sing prophetically. God, that you would use him, God. That as he begins to worship, God, that you begin to change the atmosphere right now. Father, I breathe on him now. God, that you would touch him in the name of Jesus. 
young man with the hat on right here in the front with the supreme hat on there's such an entrepreneurship over you I see business I see knowledge increasing over you the Lord is going to use your hands for promotion the Lord is going to use your voice for promotion I, I see you doing some creative things uh, with, with clothing and, and networking. But the Lord said, I'm about to cause increase in favor. The Lord said, I see garment going to different countries and different nations. And the Lord said, son, I'm going to open a door for you to be a distributor. You're going to begin to send things out to cause finances to come to you. He said, you will be one to be in a place of business and ownership. He said, I will increase the knowledge inside of you. He said, I'm going to open your horizon. You will see and I will give you the plan. I see where you're going to walk into a place and you're going to sit with other men at a table and you're going to try to figure out and you're going to it's like you're sorting out how to plan to make money weird make more money because there's going to be a network of things going to happen there's going to be an increase i see flux of finances i just see finances but our organization kind of deal with it but the lord said i'm going to set you up for greater knowledge it's going to be for the kingdom of God, but possessing, I see garment, I just see garment going to different places, selling garment. I don't know what that means, but I just saw passing through you. <laughs> now, they're, they're, I know this couple, they're, they're, they've been partners with us for quite a while now. I, I did not tell them anything about anything. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even talk to you guys till you get here at, in the green room, but... but several of the things she said I don't know what's going on specifically in your life but I can testify that several of the things she said to you were pretty right on and I, I'm just amazed to see these gifts and all. so I just wanted to testify real briefly Pastor Jose hey man, I, I, there's somebody online um, I, I don't have a name I saw a spine and between your L3 or I'm sorry L4, L5, L5, L6 there is a tear cortisone shots don't work no more uh, uh, the epidural is not working no more and you're at the point when evangelist David got up here and he began to say spines align you say God could that be me I hear the spirit of the Lord say this not only am I aligning your spine not only am I sealing that L4 and L5 and L3 I am getting ready to do something straight uh, that is going to make crooked paths straight in this season that you've been at you've lost you've lost work or you've lost finances you've lost times God said I am getting ready to redeem the time I am getting ready to bring healing not only upon you but upon your family not only upon your family but upon your village God says I am getting ready to bring such great increase in that season or in that region that is people are going to be dumbfounded by what God is getting ready to do and it's going to be because you say God could that be me and God says yes I chose you this is your season to rejoice this is your season to stand tall and walk out the promises of God says the spirit of grace online YouTube there is a Katie Moore Katie this is what I heard the spirit of the Lord say he says, you're about to experience an Isaiah 40 moment. For I will make a highway out of the wilderness. I will cause your high hill to be brought low, your valley to be lifted up, what has been crooked to be made straight. And he says, you're rough to be made smooth. You're about to step into a level ground. And upon this ground, you will see me begin to build. And immediately I was taken to the book, to the book of Genesis chapter 28. And the Bible says, and when Jacob laid a head upon a rock, behold, the heavens open. I'm here to tell you that this is your dream big season God says when you put your head on the altar when you put your head in the secret place the mysteries of God are going to open and everything that was once difficult you'll have a solution the Lord says I am going to give you a word of wisdom the word of wisdom is an answer to your problems and you're going to step into a second Kings chapter 2 verse 19 moment when the prophet said bring me a new bowl put salt in it, and he went to the source of the problem God says I'm going to the source and I'm casting you into it as the salt of the earth you will bring healing to what is bitter and I will cause it to be made sweet get ready you're about to step, you're about to step into a new season of fruitfulness because everything that was high was brought down everything that was low was brought up everything that was crooked was made straight for I made your highway out of your wilderness rejoice says the spirit of the Lord young man can you stand yes you is this your wife I hear the Lord saying that in this next season you got to let go some people I hear the Lord saying, he said, listen to, he says, listen to your wife for she knows and she sees in the spirit for there's some things I hear the Lord saying that he's trying to kill you. 
the devil's trying to kill you and your wife sees something that's connected to the friends that are surrounding you God says if you don't cut them off danger awaits but I hear the Lord also saying he said I have a calling for your life to be a youth pastor and I hear the Lord saying that you're going to reach many but the Lord said you've got to cut off those who are stagnant and holding you back for the Lord said in this next season God says I will shape and mold you but the Lord said let go of the old I prophesy in the name of Jesus now God that you will touch him in Jesus name right now and young lady the wife I hear the Lord said be encouraged for the Lord said you've been faithful even in your giving when even you didn't have enough in your refrigerator to feed your children yet you said God I'm still gonna remain faithful even when it seemed like on your last you remain faithful I hear the Lord said that he's getting ready to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it or restore I hear the Lord also saying this now the Lord is showing me a water hose and as I'm seeing this water hose I'm seeing water flowing but I'm seeing when you begin to crunch up the water hose only a little bit begins to flow it seems like your finances has been barely making it but the Lord said I release it this day God says now it's time to Sir, right here, sir, you. The Lord said, I'm going to touch your sons. I, I, I hear a cry inside of your spirit. The Lord said, I'm going to touch him. The Lord said, you're a man of hard work and hard labor. The Lord said, you're going to begin to speak and it's going to be a sovereign moment. It's going to be a moment where when you begin to speak, something's going to break. The Lord said, really close as winter comes in it's going to look like things going to dry up but the Lord said it's going to flourish for you he said things look like it's slowing down but things about to rise up and go forward the Lord said I'm about to touch I keep seeing sun sons and he said I'm about to touch them and draw them in he said this last season been rough it's been a hard season of despair and strongholds have tried to get a hold of you but he said today son I come and I break off generational things I see you back in a some some country it's like a foreign nation uh, you come from a foreign nation you're not even from America but the Lord said I'm going after them those that are over there I'm going I keep hearing him say over there and I'm going to gather them all together in oneness he said my voice shall echo throughout the land he said son get ready I'm going to touch the sons I'm going to touch the sons could I ask where are you from Where's your family? You have family overseas. Okay, that's what I saw. They wasn't here in America. They was overseas and I saw sons that was caught up in a lot of things. Yes, that's what I saw. And the Lord, the Lord is saying that your voice is going to be the one that set them free. That's why, that's why I like to ask because some people will say, well, you know, I'm from here, but there, but see, God goes farther. He see you here, but he goes beyond you. And so there's people there that are crying out for your help. And the Lord said, I'm going to use your voice, my sovereignty inside of you to go after them, to touch them, to break a generation of curse over their life. This is a season of breakthrough, the season of breakthrough over them. Hallelujah. This young lady in the gray, can I pray for you? Yes, absolutely. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He says, I've turned mourning into dancing, and I've caused sorrow to be replenished with joy. The Lord says, get ready, because I'm about to visit your family with good news. This last season has been filled with difficult report after difficult report but the Lord says you said I believe the report of the Lord and God says I come to announce to you that this is your turnaround season 
It may have felt like your dreams fell beneath the surface, but the Lord says, even when the prophet took a stick, threw it into the water, he made the ax head float. God says, this is your pick it up season. And when the young man took it, it's the word to conquer. I hear the literal spirit of the Lord saying, this is your conquering season. This is your season to take up your dreams and see the promises that God has given you be rekindled as a yes and amen. They're sealed in the heaven. And God says, all you got to do is step forward for as you step forward it will be like joshua chapter number three verse number 13 and the god of israel rested in the waters of the jordan when the priest stepped in they stepped into where god is resting i hear the spirit of the lord say as you step forward you're stepping into where i'm at rest and the word rest doesn't just mean peace it's the word that means the portion that you did not know that i've allotted for you god says there is a portion stored up that you're about to step into and it's going to cause rejoicing get ready this holiday season is going to be filled with gladness rejoice 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 i turn it around says the spirit of the lord did did you know that's prophet sergio's wife amen can you both stand i heard the lord saying power couple And I heard the Lord saying that he's going to stir the prophetic up inside of you. I hear the Lord saying when you guys begin to preach and open up your mouth to speak. God said it won't be you that speak but the Holy Ghost. God said when you begin to release the sound of worship and praise. God says you're going to begin to see deliverance happen even in the house. I see in the spirit right now that you're trying to get the building. But there's some limitations. I keep seeing no, no, no. But the Lord said I stamp my approval and I say yes. I hear the Lord say, Mashanda Yashabab, in the next three weeks. God is saying that he's going to begin to open up a greater door. God says good news is coming. And I hear the Lord say that many have talked wrong about you guys. Even left the ministry. But the Lord said stay encouraged. For the Lord said you did what you were supposed to do. And I hear the Lord saying great is your faithfulness. And I hear the Lord said worry not even about the funding for the building. For God says I'm already taking care of it. God says it's already done. that Tiana back there? Tiana, would you stand? You're entering into a new season of worship. God has been dealing with you in this last season about your worship to go to another level. I see this next season the prophetic unction that is already on you, getting ready to be exposed through your, or to be uh, brought forth through your worship, if I could. I hear God say this, get ready because in the midnight hour, I am getting ready to put melodies and songs inside of you that you're going to be able to come forth and begin to sing out. All of a sudden, you're going to break into a new song at the church and you're wondering, where did that come from? You know that it was because of the time that you spent with God in the secret place, in the lonely place uh, when nobody else was around it, but it was just you and him. I hear God says, get ready in the midnight hour. I'm getting ready to wake in your spirit to have a pen and a pencil and a pad next to you because you're going to write songs. You're going to go forth. Uh, into the nations that are going to bring forth liberty that is going to bring forth declaration and where a decree is going to be brought forth uh, this is the season of song to come out of you this is the season for worship uh, to be expressed out of you like never before get ready powerhouse because you guys are getting ready to go to another level in your worship says the spirit of grace this young lady right here in the gray will you stand up with the yes the leopard this is what I heard the spirit of the Lord say He said, did I not cause you to look upon the prophet and have your eyes meet and your heart rejoice? God says that's just the beginning of the rejoicing that's about to take place in your life. For this is a season where you will take rocks and cast them upon the waters and you will cause a ripple. God says this is the season where the words that are in your mouth are going to have an effect. It seems like you've been speaking to certain things and they have not been moving. But the Lord says do not be dismayed for I've already shifted everything in your family, everything in your life. And I'm going to cause the blessing that's needed to suddenly manifest. I heard the Lord say dream dream big ask ask big because this is your season of accomplishment i hear the spirit of god say the enemy has been bombarding you in the night season where you feel like 
I don't know what to do, but you had your sleep taken from you. The Lord says, you see it as a time of warfare, but really it's a time of the night watch. The Lord says, if you would cry out and say, speak, Lord, your servant hears, I would give you wisdom from above and I would open the windows of heaven and cause you to see the blessing and give you the power to speak. The Lord says, hear what I'm about to say. When the priest in you is empowered, the king in you speaks with authority. A king with no prayer is like a word with no power. God says, you are one that understands how prayer shifts things. And God says, I'm going to make the prayer bring forth the anointing to remove strongholds, barriers, and despair, sorrows, and troubles on behalf of your family. The Lord says, the night watch is upon you. Wake up in the midnight season. Say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Pray, intercede, and declare that the heavens are shaking on your behalf, and great will be the glory that will come. A new day has come upon you. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of the Lord. Young man right here with the white t-shirt. You, yes, stand. I don't know if, I, I think I saw you come to this stage, but I hear the Lord say you're a warrior. The Lord say you're a man of word. You're a man that knows the word. I, I see power within you. The Lord said you are a chain breaker. You are generational. Your next generation is ahead of you. The Lord said, I, I see you on a platform. I, I see you gathering with other men of God and preaching the word of God. The Lord says, son, I'm going to put such a fire in you to draw young people to the kingdom. The Lord said, get ready. I'm going to change your season. I'm going to ruffle the feathers. The Lord said, you're going to step on a platform and you're not going to look like a normal preacher. But he said, I'm going to call you into a greater place of destiny. The Lord says, son, get ready. There's going to be such fire on you that your generation is going to come and you're going to draw them to the kingdom of God. I see like... Uh, um, I, I see like the Matt Cruz little crew and just John, it's like a young generation of preachers is going to get in your circle and it's going to be such a, a ripple in the earth and the Lord says son get ready evangelism thrust and preacher is going to be upon you it's a preacher anointing over you he said you are generation you're next in line he said you're next in line I'm telling you I'm telling you there's something about you when you walked up here, you was carrying glory. You, young man, you was carrying glory on this stage. And there's such destiny inside of you. Don't let nobody look down on you. Because what you carry is bigger than you. It's the God in you that's going to deliver your generation and bring them to a higher place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah young lady here in the front with the glasses can you stand I hear the Lord saying that the devil has been tormenting you I see fear anxiety even trying to give you a depression set of mindset but the Lord said it breaks I also hear in the spirit that it was even in the generations before you I see in the spirit right now that I'm seeing your mother dealing with it, the grandmother, the auntie. God says it stops with you. I'm seeing you in the spirit not long ago. You were in the room on your knees and you were crying. And I see it dark and just there's no hope and you're just crying. I hear the Lord say, you're my precious one. I hear the Lord said, I have not forgotten about you. And I hear the Lord saying, he said, continue writing in your journal. I see you writing in a journal, letters to the Lord. It's not weird, that's relationship. I hear the Lord said, you have a unique way of talking to God. He said, I love when you write to me, for it's like a love note. And the Lord said, when you begin to write to me, he says, I feel the compassion and the love. And my love reflects off of me and comes on you. He said, that's my Holy Spirit. I hear the Lord said, he said, you can look towards the hills and know where your help comes from. It comes from the Lord. The Lord said, it's not over just yet. And I hear the Lord saying, new doors of employment are getting ready to open for you. God says, get ready. On YouTube, there is a Myla Samson. Myla, this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. 
This is your lift up your hands and rejoice moment. For the Lord says, I've inclined my ear to your cry and I've heard your call in the time of distress. The Lord says, I've responded. And he says, and now I am lifting you up. The Lord says, this is your lift up moment. The Lord says, you have been looking up at a mountain, but now I have lifted you above it and you shall look down on the things you once looked upon. The Lord says, now you will see with clarity. He says, like Zacchaeus, I've given you the power to run or surge or move forward, climb up to a high place and see from above. The Lord says, look again over your scenario and you won't see trials that are surrounding you. You will see the victory by my angelic host. The Lord says, even as it was with the servant of the prophet who came out of the tent, when he looked up, all he saw was the enemy. But when he went into the tent, the servant of the prophet said, Lord, open thy servant's eyes that he might see what I've seen. And I see your life being surrounded by an angelic host. The Lord says, the day of you seeing troubles is over. The day of you seeing answers to your problem is at hand. Rejoice, Mrs. Samson. The hand of the Lord is upon you. For even your last name means sunlight or a window God says look ahead and see through the see through the window all that I have for you for the set season before you is the season of blessing rejoice says the spirit of the Lord for I've heard your cry come on give the Lord a hand of praise can we all please stand no one moving around just for a second um, pastors if you could all stay up with me just for a second uh, Joshua, Yvette, would you come join me on the platform, please? My friend Matthew, please come to the platform. David, Malia, please come up this way. Something's happening here. Something is happening. You know, all too often I think we throw words out, things like revival, outpouring. And I, I think because we use them all so often, we can sometimes remove the power when we say such things. But I sense such a holy reverence on this room right now the power of God is here. Let's ask God to send a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit to the United States. And I'm going to ask these amazing servants of God to back me up in prayer. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to ask you but let's call upon the name of Jesus now. The nations need it. The world needs it. Yvette, you can come join us on the platform, please. The world needs it. We need a move of the Holy Spirit. Everything that's happening in our world today, all of those things which seem so hopeless, when the power of God begins to move, everything is changed. Everything is changed. So lift your voices, lift your hands. You on the platform with me, lift your voices, lift your hands. Call upon the name of Jesus. Ask Him to pour out His Spirit. You watching online, ask Him to pour out His Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, we're asking for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we need it. Lord, we need it. If you don't do it, Lord, no one can. And so we call upon the name of Jesus. And we ask you for a fresh move of the Holy Ghost. Let there be miracles. Let there be healing. Lord, raise more evangelists, raise more prophets, raise more pastors and teachers and apostles, raise more missionaries and ministries, raise more works and orphanages. Lord, empower your people such as never before. 
you feel called to ministry, get down to this altar right now. You feel called to ministry, get down to this altar right now. Steve, if you can, please sing it. Spirit of the living God. Make it your prayer. Patrick, bring this girl up here. Come on, call upon the name of Jesus for him. Power of God is here. Lift your hands. You want God to use you. Men and women of God, back me in prayer. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, let the fresh fire come upon a new generation. Let them be carriers of the glory, Lord. Use her in Jesus' name. I rebuke that lie of the enemy that says that God can't use women. I rebuke that religious spirit in the name of Jesus. Power of God is here. Get this guy right here with his Bible. Quick, 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 quick. Help him. Power of God is here, church. The power of God is present. There's such an anointing here. Turn them to me. Lord, use him. Stretch your hands forward, church. Use him. Oh, there's such a strong anointing here. Ask him to use you. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. Bring this lady here. Honto, robo, bobo. Father, let fire fall fire in the name of Jesus. Whoa. That's the fire of God here. It's a fresh anointing present on this room. Can you guys feel that? Bring the guy in the gray sweatshirt. Such a strong anointing, guys. There's power in unity, church. There's power in unity. Use him, I pray, in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Get Britain up here, quick. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of Use him, Lord. Pray in the whole use of Lord new levels, new levels. Prophet Angela, quickly, quickly, quickly. Of Jesus. Conto Robo Centeriende Robo Bokes. Spirit of the living God. Pick up 
Prophet Angela, please. Whoa. He's going to give you the privilege of paying the price. The privilege of paying the price. Where there is impartation, there is always conflict. The privilege of paying the price. He's here right now. He's here right now. Lord, touch this lady. I pray. Oh, did you guys see that? What did you feel go through you? Electricity. Do it again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have Joshua and Yveth stand just a little right there. There you go. David, would you help us? A new season. A new season. A new season. New season. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. You're stepping into it, my brother. You're stepping into it. You're stepping into it. Matt, stand right here, my friend. Lift your hands. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Matt, all I can tell you is he is so pleased with you. All I can tell you is he's so pleased with you. When you stepped in front of me right now, I sensed Jesus standing between us. There is coming on your meetings, my friend. The heavenly host joining you in worship. You will stand in places of heavenly authority. You will walk in that which Catherine Coleman walked in. You will walk in that which Oral Roberts walked in. For I send you not just as a voice to a people, not just as a voice to a region. He's sending you as a global voice. You will stand with eyes fixed on Jesus. One hand in heaven with your feet on earth. And glory, 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 glory. Even that which you feel now. The weight. The weight. The weight of that glory. Such a strong anointing here, people of God. Such a strong anointing. Nathaniel, come onto the platform, please. Have him stand right there by Yveth. Lift your hands. Because you have sought to hide yourself. Because you've said, Lord, I don't want a platform, I want your presence. Because you've said, Lord, I just want to please you, not people. Because you've been a bold voice to declare his word and only his word. God says, I will raise you and I'm not giving you a choice in the matter. God says, I will take you to heights and I'm not giving you a choice in the matter. Didn't you say I'm yours? Didn't you say do what you will? Didn't you say I give you my all? Didn't you say spend me for your glory? Therefore, God says, I will take you up on that offer and I am going to raise you for I am giving you the faith of Smith Wigglesworth. I am giving you the miracles of A.A. A. Allen. I am giving you a mantle for revival and repentance because you have humbled yourself before me. Therefore, I will raise you to places of influence, says the Spirit of God. A new generation is rising.
fresh oil. Fresh oil. Father, anoint every prophet. Anoint every pastor. Anoint every teacher and apostle. Bring Paul up here. Bring Paul. Paul, you've said within yourself, I don't know if I have what it takes. You've looked at other pastors, evangelists, and ministries, and you felt inferior, thinking, I don't have that charisma. I don't have that gift. I don't have that ability. So what you've done is you've served. You've served, and you've served. Impartation, not imitation. Because you have served, a portion now falls to you. Mantles are being released from heavenly places. Mantles are being released. Eric, Eric, mantles are being released. Mantles are being released. Heavenly, heavenly, heavenly mantles. My brother right here with the glasses. Come up here. I'll tell you, I just flow with the Holy Spirit. And when the spirit of prophecy is present, I follow him there too. You're crossing over now. You're crossing over now. You've said, Lord, I'm waiting 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 when you're ready Lord God's given you visions of you preaching God's given you visions of laying hands on people and them falling under the power God's given you visions of you casting out devils today receive today receive it's a fresh oil it's a fresh oil it's a fresh oil now, I don't have to call you out or lay hands he's the giver He's the giver. You can receive of it now here in person. Even if you're watching online, you can receive of it online. Wherever you are. What would you feel go through you, my friend? <laughs> it was like electricity and just this weight. That... <sighs> receive it all. Receive it all. There it goes. This power is present. Whoa. I feel him standing next to me. I can feel him standing next to me. His power is present. Oof. You feel that? Receive it all, brother. Fresh impartation. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Don't pull me down with you. I can't go that far on the stage. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Receive it. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Ma'am, right here, look up at me. Look up at me, ma'am. Receive it all. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Receive it. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Ooh, there it goes. This lady right here, watch her. She, she's, yeah, receive it. Fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Just receive it, people of God. Receive it all. You guys want that? Receive it. Fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. You want this? Receive it right there. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Wow. lifted in this place I feel the Lord saying that he is coming again and I, I want every hand lifted because God is gonna mark you with boldness and with courage to carry this fire everywhere you go come on every hand lifted right now I want to release a fresh anointing over you father right now in the name of Jesus I release the anointing of the Holy Ghost over them God I ask that you would ignite a holy fire God that you would stir within each and every one of us in this house tonight. 
God, the desire for purity, the desire for holiness. I believe that God tonight's going to give many of you an awareness of who He is. He's going to give many of you a new hatred for sin, a love for His Word. Come on, if you want that, lift your hands up right now. God, I release your fire right now. I release fresh passion, fresh zeal. And Jesus, mighty, I rebuke every spirit of addiction right now. If you're struggling with addiction, lift up your hand. Wave your hand right now. Say, Holy Spirit, I say yes to you. Say, Holy Spirit, I say yes to you. I command every demon power to lose its grip off your life. Every generational curse, we break your power tonight. I speak breakthrough and freedom in your heart, in every area of your heart. If you need breakthrough right now, receive it in Jesus' name. We bind every assignment of the enemy. We cancel it in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for fresh fire, fresh faith right now fresh courage in Jesus name some of you have been weary in this place I see I see the the last three months you've been weary you've been tired and I see God giving you a second win tonight I see about 50 that's for 50 of you here tonight in the name of Jesus I speak a second wind over you I speak the Holy Ghost anointing over you to break every bondage of the enemy every scheme every attack we come against it now in Jesus' name. Some of you want to encounter God. Some of you have been asking God to encounter you, even in your dreams. And I ask, Lord, that you would invade every area of their life. Invade every, encounter them, Lord, in such a way where they would never go back to how they were. But they would see with new eyes and they would hear with new ears. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come in agreement. We come in agreement for a fresh passion, for a fresh passion, for a passion, for a passion for your presence, a passion for your glory, a passion for you, Lord, a passion for the secret place. God, we don't want to just come to events. We don't want to come to events. God, we want to have a relationship with you. Father, draw us to the secret place. Draw us to the secret place. To the secret place lord i pray that you'd begin to woo that you'd begin to woo that you'd begin to woo your church back to the secret place back to your heart that you'd begin to reignite the fire that was burnt out the fire that was burnt out in the name of jesus in the name of jesus set your church ablaze set your church ablaze Set your church ablaze, set your church ablaze, let our hearts desire after you, Jesus, let the cry of your church be, come Lord Jesus, let it be as the Holy Spirit cries out, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, draw us, draw us to you, draw us to you, some of you, I hear the Spirit of the Lord. The only time that you receive glory and presence is when you go to events. And the Lord is saying to you, I'm going to begin to draw you. I'm going to begin to draw you into the secret place. He's going to begin to remove distractions. He's going to begin to remove that entertainment that had your attention. In the name of Jesus, just raise up your hands. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. He's going to pour out a new passion over you. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Jesus, now in the name of Jesus, now in the name of Jesus, now 
So Father, I thank you for your people now in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for a fire that would burn idolatry out of our hearts. Father, I thank you for the fire of first love being lit in the hearts of your people. Is not man's spirit the candle of the Lord? And so, Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is doing a work on the inside of your people. Father, I thank you the hype is leaving and I thank you the anointing is coming. Father, I thank you you're drawing people from glory to glory to glory to glory. And Father, I thank you we will have one passion. I thank you we will have one love and it will be Jesus and Jesus alone. And Father, I thank you that all the bondage of the enemy in the mind. Father, I thank you for the, the anointing that breaks the yoke in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would fill every heart with your presence and that you would come in this room in a fresh way and that in their secret place and in their private time that they wouldn't read their Bibles and say words to the wall, but I pray, Jesus, you would walk into that room. And I pray, Jesus, you would touch your people. And I pray, Jesus, you would reveal yourself as the lover of their souls and they would find rest and satisfaction in you and you alone. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd fill every hungry heart in this place. In Jesus' name, Lord, let your fire burn every single thing within us, Lord, that does not belong in our hearts, in our souls. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would rid everything that is not of you, everything that is demonic, everything that is secular, Lord, that takes our time away from you, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would set your church on fire again, that you'd set us ablaze. Lord, we pray for revival in California in the name of Jesus, that every soul, every person that doesn't know you, that doesn't declare you as Lord, Lord, that you'd use your church, that you'd use the men and the women and the children that are in this place today. Use them around the world. Use them in their neighborhoods, Lord, in their neighbors, in their schools, in their workplaces. Father, I pray that what you've given them tonight, Lord, that it would not go to waste. Lord, that it would not just be dropped on the ground as they leave this place, but Lord, that they would be carriers, carriers, carriers of the glory of God. Lord, that everywhere they go, it will be a representation that you are alive, that you are well, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, I pray that even this week, even this month, that you will give them opportunities to lay hands on the sick, that you will give them opportunities to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they will see the fruit and the power of the gospel within their own mouth, within their own hand, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb.
Father, we give you our all. We give you ourselves in full surrender. Spend us for your glory, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all who agreed said, Next month, we'll be meeting here for the last time for 2021. It will be the last meeting until next year. And our plans are to continue with these monthly meetings all of 2022. We're going to dig that well. So God bless you. Go in peace. Go rejoicing. And always remember that nothing is impossible with God. Good night.